Hello guys and welcome to our channel, this is Paper Roll. In today's video, we are talking about how to play Untamed. All the tips, tricks and details, all the mechanics and how you use them. I'll try to be really thorough in them so I don't miss or forget anything. If you think I forgot anything, write in the comments so everyone would know it. This video is inspired by a specific question I got that made me realize some people don't know about few things on how to use untamed and can't get the whole value of it so i'll make a video on it and i will be talking about all the question i got now let's start with the unleash mechanic itself you get this button with one second cooldown you either unleash yourself which unleash ranger as you see it here or you unleash your bit so it's two uh, different icons that not really this obvious but you will get used to them it's either a face of a human with glowy eyes or just one or a face of an animal open its jaw so the one on you, like on the right bar here, tell you everything about your own character. Uh, if you have boons, if you have banners, anything. So the one on you tell you your own state. Right now it's a beast open its mouth, which means the pit is unleashed. And if you hover over it with the mouse, you see pit is unleashed. And the one is here is the one that you can control. So if you press on it, now you are unleashed. And as you see, it's the face of a human. And if you go to this one, unleash pit and you will unleash it. If you are unleashed, you can see and get access to your pet skills and you can control all of them. And you get this visual yellow light that tell you you are unleashed. Because in the first beta, if you unleash your bit, as you see, this toxic uh, green thing, it stick on it and you can see it. The ranger, however, would get this glowy green thing. People hated it, so Ariane it made it fade away after like three seconds or something, so it disappeared. And they added this light, uh, as you see here, so you can tell easily if you're unleashed or not, without going into seeing this icon or anything. It's a little bit thing to distinguish if you're not looking to your bar, trying to run, kite, anything, and your bit is not even near you, so um, it will be more uh, visible. Now, besides that, we get access to what's called Unleashed Ambush Skills. If you get to your trait, this first miner here, you can right-click with the mouse to see every Unleashed Ambush Skill, what it does. So what is this skill actually? It is the first skill that flip to a different attack. Like the Mirage skills, if you're familiar with it, the auto attack will flip to a different skill. And you get a window of four seconds to either use this skill or it will go on cooldown and you get access to your auto attack again, even if you are still unleashed. The cooldown of the skill use itself is 15 seconds. So if you use your longbow and then switch weapon and immediately unleash or anything, you will not access this skill. You would have to wait 15 seconds. And as you notice, 15 seconds is way more than the weapon swap itself, since the weapon swap is 10 seconds. So usually you would be either sticking to a specific weapon or changing weapons, but choosing wisely what unleash skill you will be using, because you cannot rotate between them freely. You cannot hit both unleash weapon skills. You will always have to have longer cooldown. Which why, uh, if you watched my build uh, of the Untamed, uh, my main build for BVE right now, I usually advise to only use the Axe one since it's incredibly higher damage than the Shortbow. Now, how to tell if you have this skill? It gives you this trait. It's the same icon of the trait on you, and it's unleashed power. Which means if you access the unleashed state, it will move and it will give you access to the skill. If you wait for a second and don't hit it, it will appear on you again, meaning that if you unleash your pet and then unleash again, you would have access to it again. If you hit it, however, that means it's gone, and as you see, my bit's unleashed, and if I unleash, I don't get anything. Even if I switch weapon, I will not get anything since it's on cooldown, which is 15 seconds. Another thing about the unleash skill for the untamed is that if you interrupt any skill while trying to use it, it go on a 4 second cooldown. I'm trying to hit the stun, but behind me, it go on a 4 second cooldown. However, if I use the unleash skill and I interrupt it, I didn't hit him, but I lost access to it, and that loss will go for 15 seconds. So it goes on a full cooldown, not actually on interrupt cooldown. You lose access to the skill completely, it's that simple. So be careful not to interrupt it. Another thing about the unleashed skill, it is a trait which is basically it does not affect with alacrity and does not affect with uh, fervent force that reset all your skill, it reset your skills, not traits. So let me give you an example. This skill, for example, um, is on a 20 second cooldown if I use it near uh, an enemy. So I will do that. I will use them at the same time. It ended while about 16 second cooldown left, but as you're gonna see, I will not get the trait until exactly 15 seconds have passed. And I can use the skills completely normal and still will not get anything. So that's something also to keep in mind. 
Now, the question I got that got me interested or thought about this, it was someone said that he's disappointed with the hammer that it can't get quickness in uh, the untamed at all. So, the hammer have two skills of CC. This skill can give double days, it applies twice, and this skill can give you knockdown. If you are unleashed, there is no CC on uh, the hammer, not a single skill that do any CC. So, we have those two traits here, debilitating blow and enhanced impact. Depending on the unleash state, whether it's you or your bit, you apply a condition or you gain a boom. So if you cause a CC um, while you are unleashed, you apply vulnerability from here and gain quickness from here. If your bit is unleashed, you apply weakness and you gain stability. So if you're using hammer, it's so simple. You simply have to hit this days, for example, and you get the stability and you put the weakness, as you see. But if you are unleashed, there is nothing you can do to do that, unless you're taking any other skill like a trap or whatever to do um, the CC in order to gain the other boom. But actually, that's not true. Because if you cast any skill and then unleash before the skill land, it will be that you are unleashed, you can gain the other boom. So let me give you an example. I will use the knockdown for example here. And since I'm unleashed, I get the quickness. The stability is actually from the ambush skill for the hammer. So it's not from uh, the trait. Keep that in mind. I will do it again. As you see here, since I switched it before, I applied vulnerability and I got quickness, which is while I am unleashed. Even so, the, un the knockdown coming from out of the unleashed state when my bit's unleashed. And you can do the same with the days. As you see here, vulnerability and I gain quickness. Now that gets us to another point of the hammer. Even if you unleash while using uh, this skill, even you already unleash, the second blow will still land this. So both the blow will land this and the other blow will not be bone removal. So let me show you an example here. So as you see I can remove bones simply by using this skill. But if I use it while, or start with it while my bit is unleashed, see what's gonna happen. I didn't remove bones, and actually both hits started breaking through the defiance bar itself. Let's do that again. Both hits break in defiance bar, and nothing remove the bone itself. And also, it is the other way around. If I use it while I'm unleashed. I still remove bones, I don't land the second CC. So you will always land the hit in the state you started with, no matter how long the time it took or the end state you were in. But you will gain the bones or trigger the traits depending on the state you are in. So if you hit your skill in while your bit is unleashed, those are the effects that will always happen no matter what change. And it goes also if you are unleashed. But the traits, however, depend on the state the hit is actually delivered in, whether you deliver it with CC or not. And you can also do those mechanics while teleportation, so you can do that and then switch and I get the quickness and land the CC completely normal, while not gaining the boon as you see from here. So uh, it's really easy and it have enough time, it's uh, one second and the cast is a bit slow, maybe this skill is a bit fast, but especially this one is slow, so you can get the boons you want. And not only the hammer, you can do that with long bow, that's completely normal, no problem. So I can do that and then unleash and I get the quickness, not actually the stability. Because before the arrow land, I already uh, unleashed myself instead of the pit. Now back to the unleash ambush skills. As you see, you can right click here on them and read every weapon what it does and understand the tooltip. The second trait, however, is still working on it. So it grants you vitality, but it makes them siphon health on every target they attack and the health or the siphoning healing is reduced after the first target. So uh, depending on your healing power and damage it can change a bit but you'll do this number of damage which is quite nice and then do another number of healing as you see in the tooltip but every other hit after that will do the small number additional hit healing and it can hit up to 5 targets. However, However, the first target will always be the first target. You will only get the first healing as the high one. You would have to need more targets to start triggering the extra hit. As you see here, I'm gonna hit it and I get only one healing, which is exactly the high healing, only nothing else. As you see here, natural fortitude, I healed for that number and nothing else happened. 
Now back to the bit unleashed skills. So those skills grant you a first effect, damage or whatever they're doing, and a second effect that happen only if your enemy is disabled. Which I had a quite a problem with them uh, from the beta and how they work or how we can see the details about them. And in fact, that the second effect is a bit um, not great and in a lot of situations cannot be useful anyway. So the first one will always do poison and do a decent hit damage unless you are in combative, it doesn't do damage almost at all. And the second one will do also decent damage, remove wounds and apply slow if the enemy is disabled. And the last one will do multiple hits of damage and uh, reflect proje destroy projectile or block them and do chill only if the enemy is CC'd. And it is a combo field poison. So you can apply weakness uh, with a blast in it or uh, do do poison through projectile and stuff like that. And the first one cause vulnerability if the enemy is CC'd. Now, the thing is, like, this thing have a defense bar, for example. So let's say my bit is attacking him, no problem. If I use those skills, as you see, the second effect will never happen. If I CC him, the second effect still not happen because it require only a stun to the enemy. Um, so if you're hitting something with a defiance bar, it have to have the stun effect. It is the only time which something like this will be usable. So in BVE, anything with a defiance bar will only get them at this point. The vulnerability might be useful, but the slow will only break defiance bar and that means you already broke it. The chill will also only break defiance bar which you already broke it. So it's completely useless. Unless you're hitting anything that without defiance bar, like a normal mob, bronze or silver, you will be able to trigger the second effect at this point. And in competitives also, it's not that great or that useful because even so, the vulnerability may be nice. The slow is 4 seconds and depending on your CC, it can be irrelevant because once someone either stun break or gets stunned this whole time, the slow uh, doesn't get any useful. Like there is minor situation when it can be useful if the enemy is already CC'd. The chill might be nice to slow the cooldown of skills, but like I said, the second effect is not great anyway. Also another tip about them, I already explained it in uh, the build, which is as you see, the second hit doesn't have um, a cast time, but it actually have a delay as you see here. So it doesn't happen immediately, which can be really nice to combo with uh, the first skill since you can teleport your bit and press the skill at the same time and after the delay, the bit will trigger the bone removal. So it become easier to land. So I will show you how I do it here. So I can press both skill at the same time and as you see, it's easy to land it or easier, you can time it very well. The second skill, however, happen instantly, exactly as the tooltip said, so um, usually you'd use it defensively, and uh, if you trying to board it to a blaze to stop projectile in it, then board a bit first before you apply it, or you'll lose like a second or less, depending on how uh, much time it takes to be there, or um, the delay between you pressing both uh, the buttons. Now, another trait I want to talk about as a um, tip is this one, Fervent Force. Fervent Force is the best trait the Untamed offer in general, um, at least in BVE, since it lowers the cooldown by 4 seconds every uh, time you apply a CC with only a quarter second cooldown, so it won't apply it on 5 mobs and get all the 5 uh, to lower your cooldown. However, if we go to a bit that have an actual skill uh, of CC, I will use my healing skill for example, and I will make my bit actually do the CC and as you see, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't lower my cooldown because I need to be the one who actually hit the CC as you see here, look at this days and I get a lot of cooldown reduction but if my bit is doing it, I don't get anything however, the only thing that will be affected by your bit is this skill it's a special thing in it, it doesn't have anything to do with Fervent Force but you combo it with Fervent Force to get the maximum benefit. Let's say I'll go to Jacaranda that hit a lot. This skill lose one second of cool, its cooldown on every hit you do. No limitation, no internal cooldown, nothing. So if I do that and I use my bit here and as you see, I will even leave my bit is the one who's hitting and as you see the cooldown is still uh, counting faster than it should because my bit is hitting. Let's do that again and look at the cooldown of it how fast it count, even so I don't hit. It will count my bit hits and my own hits here. I can lower it even faster. And as any skill, it will still affect by Fervent Force. 
which is extremely simple which is a bit unique to this skill if you have an, a lot of enemies or can do double the hits or um, hit everything like with skill 5 and longbow or jacaranda's cool lightning stuff like that this skill will count down extremely fast in some situation you will have it in like five seconds or anything like only on the half cooldown you can have it almost permanent but those are kind of unique situations anyway So something else you can notice while fighting this champion here that it spawn uh, small mobs that can be interrupted easily with simply hitting them. And you're gonna notice my skill started resetting insanely fast if I do that. Not the bronze one obviously, it's really really the small ones. As you see here, I just have to hit them and all my skills start uh, resetting so fast just by hitting. because they get interrupted with normal hits so any disable that happen not the skill uh, tooltip that have to say disable if you disabled any enemy for whatever reason it will start doing that it will trigger the trait and this is why some people think this skill is extremely powerful but this is very rare in bve but anyway you should know about it and also this uh, mechanical um, Electromagnetic balls also apply the same thing and if you apply any CC from outside of its source it will reset the skill itself and as you see it reset my own skills and any CC our land it will reset it uh, the special action key which is electromagnetic balls so let me use it again and as you see it's already of cooldown I will hit this CC and as you see it lost 4 seconds of cooldown so there's a few tricks that you can pull in BVE that make Untamed is uh, extremely unique that you need to keep in mind. Those mobs are only exist in areas like this, small mobs that you can summon them. Um, some of them exist in Silver West, like those uh, red looking creatures that, uh, the Mordrum, that start healing the other enemy and stuff like that. Uh, it applies to them also that you can interrupt them with a normal hit and once the interrupt happen, you can start resetting cooldown through the trait of Fervent Force. So that's it for the video, this is everything I thought people should know, if you think I missed anything or if you still have any questions drop them in the comment, I will be answering everything, don't remember to like and share it if you think it's useful to anyone who might need it, subscribe and I'll be seeing you next time, peace.